the area where the, the victims are being brought, undressed, and killed. Let's talk about the Vaglag. <coughs> so in the first period of operation, from November, December 41, through March, April 43, uh, the victims, as we've discussed, are, are forced into the back of the gas van, uh, in the basement, from the basement of the palace. They're gassed there, stationary. The, the van doesn't move, they're gassed there. Only when the gassing is finished, the gas line would, would drive with the, the dead uh, victims in the, in the back of the van the four kilometers to the Valdelager. In the Valdelager, they dug uh, initially long pits where they dumped the bodies. And this work was done by the Jewish Arbeitskommando. From September 42, and this is also very interesting, they stopped burying bodies. They started cremating the bodies. So this is around about the time uh, Blobel and Zonda Commando 1005 starts to say, okay, well, we don't want to leave all this evidence around. We want to start digging up bodies in Eastern Europe and cremating the bodies. Kumhof is, a, again, a fast, uh, interesting historical place from the point of view. Uh, we have evidence that the first trials on using field crematoria for burning bodies, these tests were, were first done in Kumhof. So, for example, there's a very famous, some very famous documents about Rudolf Hess and other members of uh, the Auschwitz, Auschwitz Commando coming to Kohlhoff in September 42 to look at the tests that are being done on burning bodies. This is why we know, for example, that this is round about the time the, the, the bodies were uh, starting to be burned on field crematoria in the Waldlager. By then, this is the other interesting part approximately 100,000 victims have been buried in the Valdelag, in long pits. In the second period, obviously the palace didn't exist. So the palace was really used as an organizational area uh, in the village. Basically the victims were brought to the Valdelag and there was a barrack erected, just a normal uh, wooden barrack where the victims are dressed, and then they were then put in the, the gas vans from these barracks in the Valdelager. So the gassing actually happened in the second period in the Valdelager, not in the palace area. The palace area was just for uh, organization. Uh, again, there was a Jewish Arbeits commander which was changed often. <coughs> the tailors and shoemakers were not changed often. The Arbeits commander that worked on uh, the uh, taking victims from the gas fans, burying them, cremating them, digging up the bodies, they were changed very often. So we had lots of testimonies, for example, that when, uh, if, if the members of the Jewish Arbeits Commander didn't work quickly enough or they were getting tired, then they were just taken and shot uh, in the forest in the Waldlager and then they just took some more uh, 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 Jewish victims to, to join the, the Jewish Arbeits Commander. In fact, there was one senior Schutzpolizei man who was uh, responsible for the Waldlager, he had the nickname the Doctor. He had the nickname the Doctor because he was treating the Jewish Arbeits Commando by taking them away and, and shooting them. This is a, again another map from Judge Bednash from his investigation of 1945. This is, this area here is the Waldlager. This is what we're talking about. This is the main road, Colo the top, Helmo to the, uh, to the bottom. And this is the narrow gauge railway that ran along mm. the main road. So the, the gas lads used to come up from Helmo here and take the turning left here and into the Valdelager, which is a cleared area of forest. So there's forest all around. This is a cleared area. This is the first main pit uh, uh, where uh, bodies were buried from the first period before cremation happened. Here is where all the experimental field crematoria were built for, for burning victims' bodies. This is uh, obviously a modern day photograph of the, the bulb one. It hasn't come out too well in terms of re resolution. But what you can see is the uh, cleared area of the, of the bulb one. So 
the elongated, these are bricked areas, uh, these were done during the time of memor the initial memorialization of Helmo in the 60s. And these are supposed to represent the areas of the pits. Although it was found in subsequent excavations that they're actually in the wrong area. But they're just supposed to represent the, the, the pits where the, the, the victims are buried. And in this whole area are many memorials uh, to individuals, to towns, etc., etc. Again, some very interesting photographs from Judge Bednash uh, from 1945 from his investigation. These are remnants of field crematoria. So these are bricks uh, and other assorted. So the, the field crematoria were, were actually very substantial uh, uh, burning devices. So the, 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 some of them, the longest one was I think 17 meters by 17 meters. Built of brick three meters deep with, with railway tracks on top. And this is where they would, they would burn the bodies on, on top of this. And they tried many tests as to what the best way was to do it. So there was evidence of at least six uh, cre big crematoria in this area, in the Valdlager, possibly eight. This is, uh, again, from Judge Bednash in 45. This is the remnants of the wooden barrack that was built in the second period. Uh, and this is where the uh, victims were undressed before being <coughs> placed into the gas vents. So I say, without the work of Judd Benmatch, the knowledge of Helmdor would be much reduced. He did, really did a, a fantastic detailed job. And without that, the, the, the knowledge today would be significantly less.